I am unashamed. What about you? Oh, look, what the, I'm saying? Yeah, put your it, on the, you. the line of that whole podcast is Phil saying I look rough. <laughs> I look like a supermodel compared to you, Phil. You're kidding. No. <laughs> I can say that with full confidence. I can't wait to go home and tell I mean, I'm to the point now, like if Chase. I walk by, if you walk by a mirror, I'm just preparing you, but young buck. When you walk <laughs> by young. a mirror and you turn 76, you will not hear any word. It's all you'll hear is coming out of me is whoa. <laughs> I'm looking at myself. Well, saying, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> you know why a woman that was is quick. Look, you know why a woman is named woman. Whoa, whoa, man! When Adam hey. saw saw her, he went. Good point. Whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Good point. Have you heard that before? Oh, yeah. All right, I'll introduce our guest. All right, so we have a guest today, and for those of you watching, if you're watching this on, on YouTube or however you watch our podcast. We finally found a guy that fits in here. <laughs> I mean, you, you look like this. Speaking of, I mean, I, I'm not saying you look rough because you look just like these two. So, is that? Yeah, but Al, you don't. You don't look like you fit in. Correct. Yeah, I bathe and wear deodorant <laughs> and shave and you know. I bathe every Saturday. Come <laughs> sleep, whether you need it or not. Once a week. Well, that's just great. In the shower. So we have we have Jared is on here with us. He has a he's a pastor mm-hmm. uh, from Indianapolis. Uh, so and you have a podcast called the which you send me an email. Wait a minute, Indianapolis, Indiana. Indiana. Yep. Yep. I've been there many a time. I've yeah. done events around there. Yeah. Were you familiar with that? Uh, that you were there? Yeah. Uh, no, probably no. not. No. <laughs> I, Indiana is like, of all the states where I've been, I, I would say besides Louisiana, it's my favorite place yeah. to go because I love the people there. They're, they're great, great people. They're yeah. fantastic. Oh, they're, yeah. they love the Lord. Yeah, but you're not from Indiana, right? We're from originally southeast Iowa. We came from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Okay. And I say God has a sense of humor because we're not really city people, and we live in one of the biggest cities in America. So oh, yeah. there we are for about that, six years. That yeah. is fun. How many? What's the population of in, Indianapolis? I think it's, it's like 15 million or something. Really? I, I could be wrong, but I, I could all find it's out. big. I'm, a, I'm uh, on it. I'm is that on. where the capital is? is, is it is. The the, yeah. 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 No, Indiana's a great state. Jason's right. I love it. Audiences are always so you know into us and what we're doing back from the show or and even now i mean they're very engaged mm-hmm. uh which is really good i get a lot of really interesting and good notes from people yeah, you know yeah. i'm having trouble spelling indianapolis <laughs> <laughs> it's like indian indianapolis. Indianapolis. Uh, i don't know where they got that name indian well it's is indiana would it be indians did it come from indians no it's nine hundred seventy-seven thousand. Oh, well, it's close to 15 million. Boy, you are. You missed no it by that, <laughs> Boy, Jerry, that much. I don't think there's this any way. man that knows this town. I think there's 177,000 in my neighborhood. I don't <laughs> think there's. 977. 977? Okay. Yeah. Right, less than a million. Less, but you know what? It feels like 15 million. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is this not a classic <laughs> preacher? <laughs> you talk about expand the number. Just How many did you up. have last Sunday? Just yeah, round up. Well, I think we had about 10,000. 15 million. I'm bad at math. I didn't take math. I'm going to get a second. Opinion here. That's I went to Bible college. I didn't take so. Math. So Jared's podcast is not the pursuit of math. Math. Yeah. it's the pursuit of math. Well, now this. Now I've looked got a second opinion. It says two million. Uh oh, we're getting there. Now nah, you're getting there. But they're still way off from fifty. <laughs> we're getting there. Million. But you know what it is. It's probably, you, so they say in New Orleans. You know, we know it's about a million people in all of the area mm, around mm. New Orleans. But actually in the city, there's only like 200,000 in the city of mm-hmm. New Orleans. But it, when they count where everybody left the city and, you know, Mandeville and everything around there. Yeah. So it's probably like that. There probably. are no, no, except for New Orleans, I guess. And it's not gigantic, but Louisiana, we don't have gigantic We only have 4 cities. million people in the whole state. Yeah, not many people. So, yeah, we're in one of the five population centers here, believe it or not. Wow. You, you know, you're, you've been here. You've been here for 24 hours, right? <laughs> Not exactly a bustling, you know, situation we got. They saw the paper mail, you know, so that's... Oh, yeah. That's well, what... I see the discrepancy in the numbers. It's like inside the certain place is 977,000, yeah. but then when it says the... Surrounding metropolitan, metropolitan. Yeah, yeah, surrounding area two two million. So is your church in in a, one of the suburbs or? Yeah, we're in the northeast part of Indy, so okay. it's actually a Castleton area. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you knew the nickname, but you did because you just used it, Indy. 
It's well, and I call it short. Circle City. Some people don't like that. That was a nickname at one point. So really, uh, well, the racetrack. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah. I always yeah. forget about that. that that's kind of what it was known for, mm-hmm. really, for a long time. Was the yeah. race? This oh yeah. Do you, yeah. do you ever have you ever been? No. No, I'm not a big, not a big crowd guy. So no, I don't go down there. But uh, once again, you fit in here beautifully. <laughs> but heaven's gonna be crowded, but not. <laughs> Maybe crowded. not. Maybe we we'll have plenty of room to roam around. We got the whole universe. Be a lot of people. There. And narrow roads, pretty thin. So I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I went to one <laughs> car point. race, but it made me dizzy. It, it just going around in circles. Yeah, it was kind of a joke. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Yeah, a lot of deer hunters and uh, duck hunters. What's the, the most of the hunters up there? Well, north and south of there. You get outside of Indy, it's pretty, pretty flat, pretty yeah. rural. So yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of big deer there. I'm sure, yeah. like everywhere deer, else turkey. in the Midwest. Yep. Yeah, yep. they have monsters. You know, compared to there are ducks there, right? There are some ducks. We got them in our backyard. Can't shoot them, and the, the HOA doesn't let you do that. But oh, uh, there are boy. some ducks. <laughs> Here we go. Well, Indiana just moved down the list. <laughs> HOA problems. Welcome to my world. Yeah, that's our only HOA we've ever had. We said we'll never do it again. We'll never, never do that again. Oh man, HOAs are a killer. Well, I got involved in one and didn't know it. <laughs> so <laughs> until they called me in on the carpet, <laughs> and then you had trouble. So I just I I, I actually won because I. I went national with the show when we did our little scene. We right. didn't embarrass them all. So. One of my favorite little funny off scenes that was in there, and I don't know if mom just did it or somebody fed it to her, but whenever they were having the little HOA meeting and Jace does, stands up and does his speech. You well, know. that was based on a true story. I know, I know. He reenacted that. But what I love about it is mom had brought some food, and she goes over and takes it. She said, I'm not leaving this with yeah. these people, and leaves with yeah. her. Whatever. <laughs> that, was that was funny. funny. I mean, that was like, it was very much, you know, a mom thing to do. Well, I think that's what people do in the South when they're offended. <laughs> that's you right. You I'm not luck. leaving my food. Yeah. You go potluck, and then you say, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. So you you got a podcast, um, which so you reached out to me. And I, how did you know about me? Did you listen to the podcast or because you well, sent me well, what's an email? The name of the podcast. Did... The podcast is the pursuit of manliness, and uh, it was born in a season where boy God just Rubik's cubed my life and was moving things around. I didn't feel like I possessed a lot of manly skills. I, I had we just. We had a son. I had two daughters. I knew number one, just protect them. That was the main thing. But the son, yeah. that, that felt different. And uh, boy, God just used some things to really get my attention. And and I did it anonymously for I don't know how long. And I remember telling my wife one day, I said, "Hey, I think I'm thinking about starting this thing, the pursuit of manliness and whatever." And, and I thought she'd be just really enamored with her husband had finally come <laughs> home. And yeah. you know, kind of like when the Grinch brought the tree back to Whoville, you know, they would just. And she said, "If you want to work on your manliness, our toilet's leaking right now." And I thought. <laughs> That is not the response I was looking for, but uh, she's right. wife. Yeah, exactly. You, you need to do things, right? right? right so, right, right. And so it, I was a children's pastor at the time in Iowa. It was, again, anonymous. When I came to Indiana, I felt like I needed to tell the leadership, like, this is what I'm, what's starting to happen. And they were, they were good with it. So, yeah. yeah. Which well, is really interesting because I know from being a pastor myself and working that it's sometimes it is – they want all your attention yeah. in the one yeah. spot, which I yeah. get it. You know, yeah. they're paying you, you're there. But at the same time, I've realized now, when once you're out there impacting beyond just the, the walls of your place, yeah. that that's a much bigger thing that God calls us to. I wish more were allowed to do that, to be honest with you. If you use it in the right way, which which we're trying to do, you can reach a ton of people. We right. have people come through all the time who've heard the podcast or at our retreat or whatever and will come to church or you know yeah. whatever. So absolutely. Yeah. It opens the door, just like Dad was describing like our podcast is done. So you sent me an email to be on your podcast. Is this the first time? First time. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yep. So how, how did you know, had you heard the podcast or was it from the, how did you know to reach out to me? Well, the weird thing was, uh, I didn't just know, a stalker, Jared? A little because, bit. A yeah, little okay. bit. Yeah. Uh, I was, I didn't know you guys were doing this in, in like 2019. I just took a break from podcasting. I was just kind of tired yep. and didn't do anything for a month or so. And I came across the theft of America's soul on uh, Amazon. I bought I it. I, I didn't know CRTV. I didn't know Blaze. I didn't know any of that stuff. So once I did that, I went to find out what it was. Uh, bought the subscription, found you guys, started listening. And that's when I found out about your book, Desperate Forgiveness. And yeah. I thought, man, we need to have this conversation. And this is yeah, something yeah. that... Um, oh, it was my, our book. That's well, I'm yes. glad we had this conversation because I didn't know anything he just said either. <laughs> that's right. In 2019, I didn't even know there was a podcast. Of, uh, yeah, I didn't know what that was. Me either. I called a meeting flying along on an airplane. I said, I know I've never owned a computer and I've never 
turned on the internet. I said, but Al, I said, talk to you and old Zach there. I said, I know this is going to surprise y'all. I said, but if the Apostle Paul had had the internet, he would have used it. I said, it's quicker. So, but what we have here, people come from all over the United States. We convert them, point them to Jesus, and they're on their way. They leave. If they all stayed, we wouldn't have enough room. Mm -hmm. We would need a bigger mm -hmm. structure. Right. Well, you had less but people. But the structure back then. on the side of the road <clears throat> is too slow. Mm -hmm. It's it's. Of course, I'm slow to learn about <laughs> about computer ideas because I said, you know, well, the people because the structure on the road, people think that they'll just come turn themselves in, which doesn't happen very often. No, not very often. So but. we basically are infusing a percentage of America's population, and they come from all over the world. Actually, you know, we've had them there. Where are you from? Uh, Samoa. I said, as in the American Samoa outside, up, up, we're just No, up, we're talking about just, Samoa, Missouri. I said, just up from New Zealand. And then they said, that's where we're from. And I had two, and within a couple of weeks, it came from American Samoa. It's an island in the middle of nowhere. But so you never know. Where the gospel is reached. Were they big people? These, Were the huh? Samoans big people? Because most of the ones I've seen from Samoa, I mean, they, they grow some large people in Samoa. Yeah, one of them had a, a uh, what we did, the islands over there, all those islands. Yeah. He had that look. Yeah. But the other one was a guy who was probably in the military. Oh, just from America that. serving. Gotcha. And he ended up in Samoa. So, Well, what do you do on your podcast? So you talk about what, how does it? Give us a typical podcast. Well, we just, uh, sometimes I'm a pastor, so I'm not sure on things to talk about. So sometimes it's me, sometimes it's interviews of people. Uh, yeah. We have three episodes. We have a Monday, which is typically an interview, uh, somebody that I'm talking to through Zoom or whatever. Wednesday, we have a thing called A Quiet Life, and we just focus on just living a quiet life, working with your hands, mind your own oh. affairs. Oh, you'd oh. like that. First Thessalonians <laughs> 4, 11. That's uh, the most quoted Bible right. verse. <laughs> mind your own business, work hard, so, so that you will not be dependent yep. on Jared anyone. has swerved into yeah. the yeah. fill yeah. zone. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And our guys, they, they love that stuff. I mean, that's that's the that's the type of men that, that the Lord is sending to pursuit of manliness in the community. And then on Friday, it's just called Out in the Garage, because the whole thing started out in the corner of the garage. And so it's just me talking through scripture. That's it. So those are three podcast episodes each week. So, and Jared will, when, after our podcast today, so dad and I are going to be on his podcast for one of your interview days. So that was, and we said we were quid pro quo because you could be on ours. What's interesting is, uh, you may find this a little interesting, that before I met Jesus, I thought no further than manhood. So I had a saying for about 10 years, and by the way, don't ever go down this road because the road I was on led to death. But my mantra was when they would come up and look and say, what's with the bare feet in the middle of the wintertime and you're out here with no boots on, you're going barefooted. My, my saying always was the same thing, who's a man? And you know, there we go down through the woods, you know. So I just wanted to make a point but but I was off track because I didn't know that a real man has a connection with God Almighty, which I didn't. So what I was lacking with who's a man was that uh, I was not the kind of man that was approved by God. And then you started masculinity and men, men a strength or weakness. You know, what does God in the Bible say about this matter? You start through reading through these scriptures and all of a sudden you're like, uh, that's the kind of man I need to be. I need to be a man of God Almighty. I left him out of the equation. So you were bad move. You were a typical dad. Let's take a break. So, Jerry, I don't know if you've heard about uh, one of our new sponsors called Dwell. Have you heard of Dwell? I don't think I have. I'm sorry. Okay, good. Excellent. No worries. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about it. It's a Bible app. And it's inspired by the psalmist command that we hide the word of God in our hearts, you know, that it dwells there. And uh, so they have uh, come up with a beautiful listening and reading experience for the scriptures. We talk a lot on here about how people learn. You know, sometimes people are visual. Sometimes it's just auditory what they hear. Sometimes you have to be interactive. For me, when I'm studying the Bible, I have to be making notes like Jace does, except then I take it to the next level and keep it so I can use it in the future, which he doesn't do. So you got the listening and reading experience. Uh, they have all the best versions. You got ESV, NIV, KJV, you know, all of them are out there, the message. They have this read-along experience 
which lets you read big, bold text accompanied by beautiful background art while you're listening to the scriptures. It's very, it's, a, it's an environment, you know, to be able to be challenged by the word of God and inspired. Uh, so it's time to get into the word and you can get started by going to dwellapp.io slash unashamed. You're going to get 10% off a yearly subscription, 33% off of Dwell for Life, which is worth signing up for because who doesn't need the scripture in their life as long as you're here? 33% off means you save 50 bucks. So go to visit dwellapp.io slash unashamed and commit to scripture for the rest of this year and for the rest of your life. You are typical of what a lot of times, especially young men, see as manliness. And it's, it was all about physicality. That's right. Running wide open. The co- spiritual competing. part was not there. Then right. you pass that on to us because I heard that phrase, who's a man, yeah. which I didn't know you were going to talk about that. But my take from a spiritual perspective is, I don't know, this may have been something you've already covered or thought about. But you remember, so the Lord, he made Adam first. And Eve came along, and he gave the responsibility to Adam because he was formed first. You know, you have that verse in First Timothy two, right? And so he's he's in his house, which is a garden, mm-hmm. and I believe he was supposed to be protecting Eve from the evil one. Yeah, because here comes the evil one, and you remember it all went south. He, yep. he didn't do his job, but then there's a question. That I've often pondered, but I just thought about since we were going to be talking about manhood when I read this again. So after the sin happened, and remember the blame shift started happening in Genesis 3 8. Immediately. Yeah. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees, which were supposed to be the blessings. Right. It's almost like they're hiding in church or hiding in their house. Yeah. And so in verse nine, instead of this is as opposed to who's a man, the Lord God called to the man, where are you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, just think about that. Where is the man? Because <laughs> you knew, he, he knew where he was. Yeah. So why is he asking the question? He's hiding in the bushes. Where's the man? It's like when your kid did something and you knew what they did and you said, where, are you, where have you been? You already know. Yeah. Where's the leadership? Yeah. Where's the responsibility? I, I really believe that oh, I that is the point. Yeah. Where's the just put that apply that to our mm-hmm. culture? Mm-hmm. I mean, you look around, especially in our these bigger cities. Mm-hmm. We were talking about big city. Yeah. Where's the man? Yeah. Where are you, man? Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, when you back up and see the Lord God, you know, in verse fifteen of chapter two, it says He took the man and He put him in the garden. Uh oh, to work it and take care of it. He gave him a job. That's the first thing that happened. And while you're there, our culture, you say, Where's the man? God's looking for him. Where's the man? Well, look at what happened in America when all of a sudden we became a gigantic fatherless culture. You say, Where's where's dad with the belt in his hand? And he's going out there, and he said, "What? Well, what's going on?" Or time say, out, and <laughs> everybody laughs. Well, that's being mean. We're responsible. Oh, yo, you we follow you, Phil. You, you know, when I, we were in high school, <clears throat> they had one of the coaches that walked around with a board in his hand. <laughs> hey, look, and I'm not hand- that old, and I I got whipped by two principals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two. Yeah, not once, twice. And while we had that. Somebody said that was brutality. Man. Was, I was in a public uh, school. <laughs> me, let's see, uh, what, what did they say? God awesome. made us male and female physically, you know, and all of a sudden the, the, the attack starts on toxic masculinity. Yeah. Because the fathers are making sure that everybody understands I'm the head of the household. This is my helpmeet, my, my wife. But that got all screwed up. And when it did... And this is happening about from the 60s until now. All of a sudden, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God all the way up, and dad is not there anymore. And the fatherless, as you can tell, the crime rate is out the roof. Just, I mean, shooting, burning, looting, 
masks, spray cans, grown men, 20 years old, 18 to 20, got spray cans of paint, F everybody. That's where we are now. So boy, does it ever need to be met. Manhood has flown away just in my lifetime on planet Earth. I've watched it fly away and I'm like, what in the world? That's when I said, you know, I know this sounds crazy. Get me on the internet. Let's, <laughs> let's warn them. Let's warn them and hopefully they'll listen. But that's what well, well, Jason, well, my, yeah, to, to further your point, look at his answer. Where, where, where are you? Well, I, I was afraid because I was naked. Now, he's been naked the whole time. So, obviously, sin has changed the equation. But the first thing well, is I was afraid. Well, if you go back to 216, I mean, he gave him a job. And you know, you all, y'all have heard them preacher jokes or whatever. Because, I mean, it is interesting he says that because – I mean, we all know if there's no finance, there's no romance. <laughs> you know? Amen. I mean, it's just the truth. And and it doesn't mean that women can't work or whatever, right. but I, I think his point was you have responsibility here. Yep. And not just he had a job, he's like, and to be good at it. He's like, and to take care of it. But then he said, verse six, uh, 16, I think to your point, Al, he said, and the Lord God commanded you are – commanded the man you are free to eat from any tree in the garden but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for when you eat of it you will surely die so back once that has happened and he didn't fulfill his responsibility he's like well i heard you in the garden i was naked and i was afraid so i hid but my point is I think when he established a man he gave him a job he gave him responsibility but he also gave him the decree of, I don't want to say rules, but because because it was actually a more positive thing. You're free to eat all this. Right. I mean, he 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 was like, live it. I mean, I'm giving you a job, I'm giving you all these blessings. But I think the important part there is that he was saying, I'm the standard by which you make decisions. Yeah. This is not your own reasoning, and you're not going to come up with a plan yourself. I'm the standard because I mean, it is hard to know what to do, when to do, and how to do it. Mm-hmm. But I think if you have God's plan and his authority as your standard and you realize you're responsible to protect your house and to provide, no matter how that manifests itself in real life, then you're ready for the woman. Here she came. Yeah. And and not to do anything other than complete you at a higher level. And it's not based on superiority or anything like that. We're just different, and we have a responsibility. They have a responsibility. I think that's the way it was set up. I think it goes – you go back to Genesis 1, 27. You're created in the image of God. If, if yes. Satan can do anything, he's going to tear apart anything that bears the image of the creator. Genesis 126, we are to have dominion over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, you know, everything that moves on the ground. Um, the animals are well aware of that decree has gone out, that stay away from, from humans. He talks about uh, be fruitful and multiply. That isn't just in childbearing. It's to give more than you take. Men should be giving more than they consume. That's just part of our nature. That's yeah. the, And then you talk about Genesis 2.15, to work and keep what's been entrusted to you. You've been given a wife. Give her back to the Lord better than you received her, children, etc. And then if you do marry... You, you marry a woman and you leave your father and mother and you hold fast to your wife and you have a yeah. covenant between God and her. And if forget how you look, talk, what you do for a living, whatever. If you can take those five things in Genesis 1 and 2, you, you'll do well. You'll be yeah, okay. I agree. I agree. And I think that was God's plan. And it wasn't like he didn't let the man do anything. He's like, you get to name stuff. <laughs> that's it basically he's like don't eat the drip but he's like hey you can you'll have dominion so yep. name the stuff well and there was so, also let's face it it had to have been that season before eve came along was also for him to realize that he was incomplete i mean that's what that's why that season was there because remember he said you know, what are you you doing? Have you found a companion among everything? No. I, I, and he said it wasn't good for man to be alone. Exactly. And even, well, a lot of people, they don't like that verse because they're like, oh, he's saying I can't be single. But no, I mean, you need some accountability and so you can be responsible. And even if you're not married, you still need accountability, whether it's brothers or father figures or grandma. Right. It's not good to try to go out there and do life by yourself. I mean, I'm famously called Lone Wolf, but I get it. 
I need interaction. I need people holding me accountable, you know. But when I met my wife, well, I now, okay, I needed this. Right. You know? I ran away from seeing y'all, you two, and the one beneath you, Willie. <laughs> I, I, like, I, I like pulled back term, when they said, us. are you going up there when she has the baby? I said, I can't help her with that. That's the doctor between her and the doctor, whatever. I'm, I'm backing out of that. But you've grown since then. Yeah, well, and then I said on the fourth <laughs> one, when Jep came along, I said, okay, let me just go find out what these women are down here for. <laughs> so I'm sitting there watching the doctor and that woman of mine, and she's having her baby. And when the baby came forth from her loins, I'm standing there saying, I have a change of heart. I salute all women worldwide <laughs> after watching that. I said, because I don't want any part of that. Yeah, Woo! no man. I mean, all right, the birth of a son to me all, all of a sudden took on a meaning. I said, man, these women, they have it rough. But <laughs> so, I, so I asked the question. It changed my life. It, and it right, and you you <clears throat> noticed that, and you also thought you things would never work again. Yeah, uh, let's take a break. Oh, I said my sex life is over. After watching that, but I got over it in about a month. <laughs> but, I mean, it was it was it was rough. Let's take a break to watch. I think it's actually six weeks. You have to yeah. Well, about, well knows. six weeks, whatever. Yeah. So so I brought <clears throat> up in the in the overtime. I brought up the idea about. Sort of one of the attacks in our culture has been toward gender, and so I think it's interesting as we start out here and look at Genesis three. It was easy to see in the completion of humanity because because let's face it, man was incomplete, with just man. So when woman comes along, humanity now is complete, you know, and anatomically, you know, emotionally, spiritually, all of it in the image of God, man and woman complete humanity. Mm -hmm. So. To me, it makes sense that the evil one has tried to attack that from the very beginning. I mean, he introduced sin, and the sin trick was you'll be like God, to Jesus' point earlier, you could, that idea that we can be in control of our own destiny. But really, let's face it, the evil one wants to destroy the work of the Almighty. And what better way to do it than the basics of humanity? He's the father of murder and lies. And I mean, he's hood, hoodwinked the human well, race. If you think about it, if you destroy the family <clears throat> and to have the family, you have your different roles. I mean, you have the husband, the wife, and the children. Doesn't mean you can't. I mean, Paul wasn't married, right? And he yep. was serving God. It, you know, it, But he set up this family, which would transform into the idea of a forever family. Correct. Which goes back to what I said on why Jesus, I've been on this here lately. Why did Jesus, as a resurrected being, why did he have those fish? Why did he have a why did he have a meal on the bank of the Sea of Galilee with these disciples? Why would he do that? I mean, there was he wasn't eating the fish to stay alive. He just came back. That's why we eat. I mean, we we enjoy eating, right? But we we if you don't eat after a while, and it's okay to fast, but after a while, you will die if you do not eat. So why is an imperishable, immortal being who has proven that he can beat death? Why is he having this moment with his disciples eating fish? I mean, it has to be love. It has to be the idea of a forever family because that's what you do as a family. You get together and you have meals and you have your friends over. And I think he was giving you a picture of that. Well, if you can break that down, because that's where it all starts. Right. You break down the from a from a spiritual warfare perspective, <clears throat> you break down that family dynamic, the whole thing's going to crumble. And if you notice, and most people never bring this up, while Jesus was on the earth, there was a group of, I think it's John that brings it up. I think it's John. One of them does. He brought up the fact that there was a group of women that took care of their needs, mm -hmm. meaning, you know, you're, you're camping out, you know, two thirds of your life. Yeah. You're, you're in the middle of <clears throat> some rocks. They goes in a quiet place to get away. But he had those women in there cleaning their clothes, washing their clothes, 
preparing meals. They were with them the whole time. Actually, they they supported well, the whole thing. They, they supported. That's, that's where the working, money came from. Yeah, remember the woman giving the bottle of perfume? Yeah. Well, where'd she get it? I guess she's working. You yeah, know? right. That's why I'm saying it, it's just not the narrative. Even even people in the church, I think, has has missed it somewhat because it in some churches because they view a lot of times Jesus just looks almost. Like they took all his power away, you know, you know, because he he humbled himself and died, and they're like, oh well, you know, there's no power. But then when you read First Corinthians fifteen, you know, he he mentioned this about Adam when he said uh, fifteen twenty one. You know, we we just studied First Second Corinthians, but he says, for since death came through a man, because Adam obviously didn't do his job. Now, I mean, there's no doubt that Eve was the one that sinned, but why is God saying, where were you? Right. And he's making a point. Yep. Because, you know, later on in 1 Timothy 2, he said, you know, it was Eve that sinned. But why is he saying, where, where were you? Why did he start with Adam? Well, yeah. So it's it kind of reminds me of, I mean, this is not, you know, in, in stone. I'm just saying it reminds me like when I would come home and my kids were, had broken into a fight or whatever, I usually went to the oldest and said, hey, what? Why didn't you step in here? Right. You were made first. <laughs> You've been here longer. <laughs> you, should, you should know better. You should know. So, But he says in 21, since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. <clears throat> now, you're talking about a man. Watch what he's fixed to say here. For as an atom all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. And so my, my point is, you want, you want to know the power? I mean, we're talking about Jesus is indestructible, immortal. He's coming back. And for everybody that thinks, oh, well, this y'all are just so, you know, you're weak because you humble yourselves. And, and those are, I think, strengths that are hard to do because it's in our nature not to be vulnerable. And, but we do it for the kingdom and, and, and for God's love. But don't ever doubt, when you talk about strength, I mean, we're going to be resurrected from the dead. And you can't get any more strong than that. In, in a, Imperishable. Yeah. I mean, immortal. What, what, <laughs> I mean, the chickens are coming home to roost <laughs> at a day. If it powers what you're after, I'm going with someone that's imperishable, immortal. I mean, you, you can work out till you die. <laughs> then what? You're not going to accomplish the power that we have in Jesus. Right. Which it I, gives me confidence is what I'm saying. See, I, I'm looking. We're talking. You and I, you out of Indianapolis, what, of Indiana. <laughs> we're sitting, but these are two of my children. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're talking to your children about spiritual matters, when they're in their 50s going towards 60, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, I've just been sitting here watching this whole thing unfold. But I look back at their training phase. If I had not been there, if there had been no me there, no father, I'm telling you, they wouldn't be sitting there probably speaking about Bible verses. It's, it's training. And if, and if the father's not there, and take back, you add that to their mother, you know, one of the ways to have a belt on your butt <laughs> is to disrespect your mother. Mm -hmm. That was number one on the list. Never disrespect your mother. And I stayed too by that because she had the ability to say, they, they, they disrupted me. They, 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 well, you need the accountability. I'm like, who right did it? Who right did or it? wrong. You need to be humbled. You know, That's I right. mean, you, well, you, you just need that. And in that humility, I mean, he's got to be there, the father <clears throat> in that humility, dad, in training us, and teaching us by having a dad yep. that, that admittedly you said I was the all the wrong things until I got introduced to Jesus. Then I was, I tried to do the right thing. So because of that, because of that humility on your part, now you trained us to not dis, be disrespectful of our wives, of my daughters, mm -hmm. my granddaughters. I mean, the whole idea is I'm here now I'm a patriarch. I've got three generations, yep. but that's how you pass that on. Let's face it in America. That's the biggest thing missing in whole groups of our population. They have no idea. But they're not being taught that. Hang on one second. Let's take a break. Yep. 
God's still asking that question to every man. Where are you? That's right. And each one of us has to identify, yeah, like define correct. your reality. Where are you? And so you understand, I'm going to be a man of presence. When I walk into an environment, I want to add value, not arrogance. I can take out garbage. I can do the dishes. I can mm. pray if needed, or I can whatever. But every man has to realize God is asking you that question. Where are you? Yes, sir. And with yeah. training, you say, well, well, y'all visited my home this morning, early in the morning. So Miss K sitting there, you know, you say, well, probably though, when no one's looking, y'all are going, yeah, yeah, no good, outburst, cursing, and care. no, no, none of that. You say, all oh, that's gone away, gone away. Just train yourselves to know the difference between good and evil. No outbursts of cursing and drunkenness and hollering and jumping and being mean. No, no, we, we, we're like, no, just stay, it's steady as she goes. Right. Now we're in our 70s. We're like an old man and woman now. <laughs> No, you are no man, not yeah. like. Yeah, and I well, looked up one day I mean, and I said, boy, that was quick. <laughs> it's like last night. I was sitting on the couch reading this, jotting down. I mean, I was thinking we're, we're talking about being men. I thought, where's where's the man? I I, I just, I, I never thought about it. I read that. I was like, where's the man? Where's the man? Well, then I heard the sound of it sounded like throw up hitting the floor. You know, you know that sound. Oh, that's not a good sound. And I thought, because we have a baby now who who throws up a lot, and uh, I heard Missy saying, "Ooh, ooh, ooh," and I heard, I just was hearing that splatter, and I thought, "Where's the man?" I got up, <laughs> went to the went to the paper towels, and went in there, and it, I mean, I'm telling you, how could a, that a child that small put that sort of fluid out? And you I chose mean, to basically. Take this child in when I ask girl in yeah, prison. Yeah, because I look because in that situation, that's where I was. I going. mean, your child is not your flesh and blood, so why did you step because in? Because I thought, where's the man in this situation? The there woman no man. is in jail. Mm-hmm. We, that won't work. So there, you know, we get a call, and I, I basically you lived out. Call. Where's the man? Somebody's not doing their job, so we're going to step up in the gap. Which I don't know why I had heard that, but I, I, I remember a sermon I'd heard about Stand uh, in the Gap. Stand in the Gap mm-hmm. and I wrote it down. E- Ezekiel twenty two thirty. Yeah. Have you read that? Oh, yeah. It's a straight I look, I it's heard a, this it's a rated R chapter. You can read it in your own. Ezekiel time. what? Uh <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> But there's some verses in there. Look out. That's in the Bible. Yeah, there's one. I'm sure people are going to be like, hmm, what was that? Oh, it, All right, read it on your it'll own It'll be time. read now. But in Ezekiel 20, 22, 30, this was the final analysis because judgment was coming on Jerusalem. Right. And he and the Lord gives you the reason why. It was of a all bad, things. bad scene. Yeah, yeah, if you want to say any, you're more of a uh, the history than I am. It's Al, a bad but, scene. But he says in verse 30, and I'm skipping to this. This is like going to the final paragraph of a book, (laughs) but we're doing it. He says, I looked for a man among them. and Now, remember, this is the reasoning why judgment was coming. Who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. But I found none. So I will pour out my wrath. So I thought, man, what a what a bad thing in our society when you can't find one man to stand up in the gap. That's right. So here we have a situation in the world. I I believe that God made all humans yep. knitted together in their mother's womb, and you have this structure in place to care, protect, provide, offer love. So we're standing. I'm trying to stand in the gap. By the way, so, Jay. So what? what to just finish that last point? So I got on my knees with a roll of paper towels and started cleaning up vomit. And look, Missy said, yeah, babe, you don't have to do that. I mean, it almost made her uncomfortable that I just quickly got up. And I, so you know what I said? I said, I didn't want you saying, where's the man? <laughs> she just looked at me bewildered. Like, what she didn't he? know you were working on your no, lesson. I was like, where's the man? I'm right here and I'm cleaning up because look, I just read first Corinthians 15 about the resurrected Jesus. But he also did another thing is he sacrificed. And that's why in Ephesians 5 when it said, hey, love your wife like Christ loved the church. So I think it's the combination. Yes, there's a power because we know we're going to live forever and we're going to be eternal. We're going to be an eternal man. 
that that that's exciting. That's powerful. Yeah. But we also are willing to sacrifice for the family at hand. That's all I was going to say. You're pretty good because I found a note in, that had been placed in my Bible. I didn't place it there. And on your way, on my way to find an Ezekiel, the text you went into, I ran up on this note, Uh-oh. and someone had slipped this note in, <laughs> and and lo and behold, it's my woman, Uh-oh. my Uh-oh. wife, and she says. It's okay to be embarrassed when you are giving all the glory to God. And she puts her name, Kay Robertson, like, like I didn't know who wrote it, you know. <laughs> but she sent me a little note. It's okay to be embarrassed. And I thought about it. I said, wonder what she's talking about. Because they're doing Does a movie. Does it bother you to get they're embarrassed? They're doing a movie of my life. And I said, oh. they said, aren't you really proud of that? I said, oh, I am very much embarrassed. Yeah. For what's going to come out of that movie. Because it's, it's it's the rough patch. You yeah. Know. So, and she would just want to give me a few words of encouragement. Well, that was nice. Look, look, it's okay to be embarrassed. And she knew the one place to get a note to you where you'd find it was in your Bible. really, we're all but embarrassed. I, I found out today, <laughs> Jason, on your behalf, your your mother wrote that note for your dad. Yeah. S- some men would yeah. never find the note. Well. Because they don't get the Bible. <laughs> she, buried, she buried it <laughs> yeah. in Ezekiel. So They're I don't not looking in the scripture. That's right. I mean, look. She might should have put it in John or somewhere. Because you know? a lot of people are thinking. I mean, I told Missy a couple weeks ago because I couldn't remember something that I should have remembered. And I said, look, you're going to have to start operating as the cloud of our relationship. <laughs> All the information. the what? The cloud. Well, you don't. You're not. <laughs> How are we going to explain the cloud? There's a place where all the information... It's called you know, the cloud, Dad. It's called the cloud where data is kept. What verse is that? This it's, is second opinions that's of why the I, internet. That's what I thought. But go ahead with, it, with your point. So my point was that because I'm, I'm not... Like when you talked about your segments about the garage and, and fixing things... My manhood, now, I, I, I've got some good qualities. I can be seen as a man from a distance. I like that. And uh, I can provide, especially in the outdoor world, meals and stuff. But fixing things, terrible. I mean, she if something breaks, she fixes it. Yeah. Now, the first 10 years, I tried to fix it, only to make it worse. <laughs> and it was a fine. Unfortunately, that was a problem. gift or a lack of gift we got from Dad, because Dad can't really fix much either. Just... We don't have that skill. I can't fix anything, and I can't remember anything. Right. So I'm like, you're going to have to pick up the slack in our relationship because those are two embarrassing qualities that I ha- I can't remember anybody's name. I can't remember where I've been. So, so let's take a break. So, Dad, uh, you asked about the cloud. So... Who was the first man to download files from the cloud using a tablet? It's got to be somebody that was a spiritual man. Moses. Moses. First man to download files from the cloud using a tablet. Bill doesn't get it because he doesn't know what the cloud (laughs) is or a tablet. But he knows Moses. Yeah. The cloud, yeah. That was from one of our listeners. I I don't think we should have the internet intervention cloud software with Phil. Yeah, it probably won't work. Maybe Jerry could do some no, I don't, do my some background's not that. there. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine's not either, but I kind of figured it out. <laughs> well, Jace, the- I was there when you were telling your story, that which was admirable. I, I'm glad you were the man. Uh, if I had done the same thing, then we would have heard that same sound with a much bigger volume of, oh, no. well, look. of everything I had. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I didn't well. bring that up, but guess what? About 20 seconds in it, I, I went, through, I started, she said, what's wrong? And I said, I'm gagging. Yeah. She's yeah. like, over that, then we got into an argument. Oh, yeah, there you go. Like, Babe, it's a it's a re it's a reflux for him. It's a reflex for me. <laughs> I'm the same way. Just oh, smells. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say something, but uh, let let it let it be. Well, well I was just going to say, uh, Proverb fourteen, I think it is. He says, I, "The fool says in his heart there is no God." Without a father, if you have a father, but there's no God there, there's no connection on how that flows down to the children that you had. Right. Without God. Well, how are you going to train them to do what? Yeah. To be what? You see what I'm right. saying? Oh, yeah. You, That's you, Psalms 14. You leave, yeah, Psalms 14. If you, yeah, 14. if you leave God out of the equation, 
as a father, how in the world are they going to get the information? Well, and that's I, that's a good verse, Phil, because because I looked it up because I knew it said something about men. There it says the fool says in his heart, "There is no God; they're corrupt, deeds are vile. There's no one who does good." Because you don't have a standard for that's right. right and wrong. But verse two says the Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to yep. see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. That's mm. my and point. I, I, and I think that is the point about seeking, being open-minded enough as a man. That part of our what we can offer is is to be open to ideas, which God is the best idea. Right. But, I mean, th- it's, some people are just not even open to it. I mean, they come out of the womb, and they're like, hey, I'm see, a man. Discipline <laughs> comes from... <clears throat> family structures that at the heart of all of it, he has to be there. The standard of conduct, of interaction. If God's not there, where, where, you, where are you going to go? That's what's happened to America. They, they, they rely on each other to come up with all these schemes and this and that and other. You say, where, where's, where's, where's any teaching about God? I mean, that's Psalm 14. If you read the whole, the whole chapter there, that's what he's talking about right there. Well, it's like there's I no about base. In the last decade, we've had the quote unquote Me Too movement, which shows men taking advantage of women mm-hmm. in positions of power. Which is probably what happened. Oh, it's happened. There's no, I mean, there's no doubt this revolt of getting away from gender happened because even people in the church have abused women. Oh. And, you know, it, and it is. They just look at them as sex objects. Right. But my thinking is, is we were me too way before now all of a sudden because we were right. like, I've I've always wanted to treat a woman with respect mm-hmm. and dignity. And my wife, she's my wife. Mm-hmm. Why would I want to be abusive to her and treat her terribly? Or, or if, even if you're dating as a Christian, you should, this this woman's a daughter of the almighty God. Like we were doing me too way for, they were like. Right. Whether well, you have responsibility pr- to protect the innocent. Well, I was, I was doing some premarital counseling with a couple and she said, First of all, I don't do the word submit. And I said, well, that's a Bible word. We'll get to that later. And so, <laughs> so, uh, but but she's but she's right, because if you have a bad view of what submission looks like, Great none point. of us want to submit to that. Oh, so right I said, point. let's start with Ephesians 5, 1, be imitators of God. If we can get that right, we can submit to anybody. And so as we begin to understand that, you know, I said, my wife is inferior to nobody. You know, and like you talk about childbirth and, and every other area of life, like my kids are blessed to have a mother, but they're also blessed to have a father. And together we help each other yep. ultimately get to heaven, but also our children get to heaven. And so if we focus on the bad words or the things that are negative and you've had some bad experiences with that, then you say, well, then I don't want no part of that. Right. But if you get back yeah, to they scripture. They look at submit and automatically they think meanness. Absolutely. We don't, I wouldn't submit mean. to that. Abuse. Yeah. yeah I you wouldn't know, do there's been throughout my, however many years I've been in the Lord, there, there was always been a bunch of verses in the Bible that made me uncomfortable at stages of my life. And what I realized is once I started seeking and having an open mind and having a better understanding, there was nothing to feel uncomfortable That's about. right. But, and that was one of them. I was thinking, I mean, well, why, why, why do we have to, why do they have to submit? Or, I mean, that doesn't seem right. Cause in my mind, I was thinking submission as in, I am man. You you will bow down when I enter. <laughs> we, we've we, never said that word in our house, well, submit. Right. But we also don't talk about divorce or any of those other things either. So, yeah, exactly. well, because I mean, you, you I, think about it, Jay's from a competitive nature, where you know you're competing with another person, and you, you want to force them into you know exactly. you, you will submit to me, I'll conquer you. But that's that's we're not understanding the character of God at yeah. all. And it takes time, and I and I think it's okay. I mean, the first few months of our marriage you know i was totally in the wrong i was like this is what we're gonna do this is how we're gonna do it you're laying down the laying that this is and then when i got to part this is why i had a few verses down there i was like okay i'm the man (laughs) so tell us there we had a little bit of time here on the podcast uh some of the things you've seen through your ministry and podcast that have kind of been victories in people's lives. I mean, can kind of, just tell us something about that because I want people to go and check it out yeah. uh, and also tell people how they can get well, to I, it. I should say it started in the garage, not because I'm handy, because there's no more room in our house. So that <laughs> was, I'm not handy at all, but yeah. uh, through the corner of a garage, you know, this podcast, getting to talk to guys like yourself and others who love Jesus, just trying to tell people about him. 
man, we got military and first responders all over the country and the world who listen to this thing. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm neither one of those guys, but I, I love them. We got people across the, the globe who are listening. And so through that, we started a discipleship community called Tribe, six month community. Uh, we read the Bible. We have, you know, I mean, it's hard to get men to the church at the same time, but if we can get on Zoom and other things. So we're using technology for the glory of God. And we talk about we're just redeeming it for the kingdom and, um, you know, just retreats and stuff like that, that these things that start online for a lot of guys, they're a safe space. It's safe to listen to you guys from a distance. This makes people nervous. But once they develop that trust, there's a brotherhood there. There's an accountability there. There's the guy that will drive countless miles to sit with you or whatever it is. So just seeing how the Lord works through um, a corner of a garage is, is pretty fascinating. We're, we're kind of with you on that, because if you get it down to where uh, they use the phrase, you go to church for two hours, and then when you walk out the door, that's all done until the next appointed time. A week later, you say there's a lot of hours between Sunday to Sunday that we're not, yeah. This you have to be this way Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You are aware of what you just intimated. You said you have to be on your guard and you have to live a godly life before Jesus all the time. Well, that would settle a lot of the friction that's inside these homes, even people among the church. They just don't practice it Monday through Saturday. They have to understand we are the church. This going to church and then we're done and don't look back to the following week. You said it's not enough. Well, and that's, what not I, enough. that's what I love about what Jared is doing. So th your website is what? The Pursuit of Manliness dot com. There you go. Pursuit of Manliness dot com. Check it out. Check out his podcast. You're doing a great work there. And Dad and I'll be on there too. So we got in our overtime. You know how we say, Jared, on our podcast, how we know it was went by, went, how it was pretty good? It went by fast. Yeah. That, that went by <laughs> fast, which is good. Uh, we got a little bit of overtime segment where I'm going to finally get to my three points. I'm going to of my lesson <laughs> we've been <laughs> that, hours, I, that I started a podcast ago so we'll do that in the overtime uh remember that's blaze tv.com slash unashamed to subscribe to be able to get access to the overtime thanks for listening to the unashamed podcast help us out by rating us on itunes and don't miss an episode by subscribing on youtube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes and for even more content that you won't get anywhere else Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.